So you will be aware that this year is cycle um, three or year C, and during year C we are um, at Mass on a Sunday and most of the weekdays, ex except when it's a feast day, um, we have little excerpts from uh, the Gospel of Luke. And sometimes, um, for those of you who only manage to get to Mass on a Sunday, uh, you sometimes miss uh, lovely little bits of, of, of Luke and the things he says and, and, and the, the image he gives us of Jesus. And also, I'm always looking for a clue in, in the gospel on which I can, you know, maybe approach it in a slightly different way. And just for example, in the gospel this morning, Zacchaeus, is Zacchaeus is um, the patron saint of shorties. <laughs> now, we think, uh, we, we normally interpret that gospel as Zacchaeus climbing up the tree so that he could see Jesus. Now, if you change that, what if he climbed up that tree so that Jesus could see him. See how that changes totally. And then Jesus did see him, and he called him down, and what? Zacchaeus was filled with joy. And that was the clue. He was hoping and hoping that Jesus would see him, and so he came down. Now, going back to what I said a couple of minutes ago, on Thursday morning, um, there was a lovely quotation from, from the Gospel of Luke, and um, I was very, I thought, oh, that's such a lovely, lo lovely image of Jesus. Um, I really want to share that with more people than just maybe those who were at the um, 6.20 Mass on Thursday morning. And it was a lovely image of, that Luke painted of Jesus. And it's never mentioned, and nothing is ever made of it, but it's just absolutely beautiful. You remember uh, Jesus um, looking at Jerusalem, and he says, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who killed the prophets and stoned those who were, who were sent to you. How often I have longed to gather you together as a hen under her wings, as little chicks under her wings. So we are the little ch chickens, the little chicks. Now, I don't know, I um, lived in the country and grew up on a farm, and so I'm very used to used to this. It was, you know, it was a lovely sight. Tiny little chicks, you know, tiny little things, smaller than my hand, and they're running around, you know, but keep close. They keep close to the mother hen. And then suddenly one little chick decides he's, he or she has an orphan, and she runs over to the mother hen, and the, and the hen opens up her wings. Now the little chicks go in under her wings, and it's a lovely, lovely picture to see that be beautiful image of Jesus. It's a very feminine, feminine image of Jesus. Shows the feminine side of Jesus. You know, Jesus could only have used that phrase, psychologists say. He could not have used that phrase unless he was in a very good relationship with some woman. And we know from the gospel, the gospel tells us another one of the gospels, that Jesus loved Mary and her sister Martha. So he had a very good relationship with Mary and Martha. And in fact, Jesus had a very good relationship relationship with women. And any man who doesn't have a good relationship with women, he, he ends up being very macho, very 
rational, very controlling, very cold, totally lacking in any kind of feeling or emotion. On the other hand, a woman who doesn't have a good relationship with men or with a man ends up being very, very um, emotional, saccharine, um, very moody up and down very, very often. So we need, we complement one another. And God, God is the perfection of male and female. God is both male and female. And so God is a family, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So they are in perfect relationship. Now, in my very first parish, as a new priest 52 years ago, um, the first parish I was appointed to, um, the parish priest who was there, the pastor, he died two weeks before I got there. He died from a heart attack, poor man. I don't know whether it was the thought of me coming or what happened to him. But anyhow, the man, he, the man, poor man, died of a heart attack. So he was replaced by a new pastor. And um, the new pastor was a total misogynist. He had this hatred of women. I remember telling him one day, when a, my first day or second day in a parish with him about um, we were short of milk. And a lovely woman called Jackie went and got a bottle of milk for me. So I told him, I met a lovely lady called Jackie. Uh, Never call any woman by her first name, he said. Yeah. yeah. Right. Never call any woman by her first name because, it, because the day you do that, you're in trouble. In trouble, you're laying yourself, I don't know what, open to what. Uh, I don't know what he had in mind. So I was very bold. So from then I began calling every woman, unless she was very old, by her first name. But I learned a lot from him, how not to behave and not deal. He, he had this awful attitude to women. He had nothing to do with his own, own family, no contact with him. I never knew he had a sister until he actually died. And he ended up his life, very sadly, alcoholic, suspended from the priesthood, lonely, isolated. Very, very sad. I attended his funeral, and there was very few people there. But, you know, he taught me something very, very important. And I have no hesitation in saying that to be a good priest, to be a real priest, you need to have some women in your life. You need to have a good relationship with with at least one woman or a number of women with whom you can open your heart and share to. Because you cannot share the same way with a man as you can with a woman. And women have much more feeling. And good friends of mine, women friends, have pointed out things to me that I was not aware of in, in myself. And they've been a great help to me in my life. And thank God I've never been scared of women. <laughs> well, thank God for that. And I'm, and I'm still, I'm, after 52 years, I'm still tired of to people that I'm a man who happens to be a priest, not a priest who just happens to be a man. So, does that make sense? I'm a man who happens to be a priest, not the, the other way around. Because some people look at you and think, oh, you're a priest. No, I, I'm a man, a human being like anybody else. But my vocation is the priesthood, 
I've been very, very happy in that vocation. And another little thing. Have you ever noticed um, the um, beautiful portrait or painting by Rembrandt of the return of, of the prodigal son? You're, you're familiar with that. And if you look very closely at that, there are two hands on the prodigal